This is session four, part two. Fire away, Feb. The question I wanted to ask is, um, like I said to you outside, I've been inspired by you guys for, for a few years, three years now. But there's, you know, I get my moments where I get feel like I've got a desire for God and feel moments that I don't have desire for God. And, yeah. you know, and sometimes it goes a week, two weeks where I don't even think about God. And sometimes it's an intense week when I do. Yeah. Just want to know, like, how I can, why, you know, is it just about fear that I don't have that desire or is it? Is it no, bit... it's not just about fear. No. Um, obviously, fear plays a part in desire. So every time you have fear, it suppresses desire, certainly. But, but desire is not just about fear. You see, you see, there are people in the sixth fear of the spirit world who have no desire for God. No desire to have a personal relationship with God. Now, they don't have much fear. They have no fear that affects their love of other people at all. Um, they obviously do have some fears about God, but they don't have fears related to other people. Um, they have perfected their natural love, the love that comes out of them towards others and the love that they, they allow other people to love them, but they still haven't developed a desire for God. So, and the first human couple didn't have a desire for God. And yet they were completely without fear, actually, when they were created. So they had no fear at all. And they still didn't develop a desire for God. So developing desire is not just about your injuries. Right? And this is something we need to understand about our emotional self. That just because if you don't have a desire for something, it's not just because you have an injury. It's because also you don't have a desire of some kind. That, and desire is something that has to be developed. You know, you, you, you never start something generally without there being a spark of something. But, but you generally don't do anything about it until that spark sort of develops into a flame and then develops into a furnace, you know, that fires everything that you do. And that's the same with your desire for God. So, so there was, there's a couple of things that I would look at. Firstly, I'd look at my fears, like every time you have a desire for God, as you know, you have quite emotional week when you have a desire for God, and maybe there are some fears associated with you having an, a week that's emotional like that and feeling like if every week was like that, it might be a bit overwhelming, and so there's a tendency to shut down. But... but uh, and sure, there are I'm not times able when to function too. You know, yeah, you think in that you're... week, um, I can't sing, I can't do much. It's so there's some of your fears. Right? Yeah. some of your fears are that you're not going to be able to continue your normal day to day life if every week's like this. And so that obviously is fear that's stopping a desire for God. But to be honest, I feel a lot of the stuff about desire for God is just a lack of desire. For God, like a, l a lack of desire to know God and to understand God and to understand the importance of the relationship with God and all these other things. Because I, I don't feel, when I have a week where I'm like really focused, and, and I usually have months, not weeks, where I'm really focused on God, and I don't feel like I can't do anything else. I feel like I can do everything else better. So, so that, you know, would tend to indicate that if you're, Having a feeling like it's shutting yourself down from doing other things, and maybe you know there are quite a lot of fears that are being confronted every time you have a desire for God. But my suggestion is, um, firstly, work your way through what fears are preventing your desire for God. And in fact, I would focus on those fears. That to me, they are the first fears that are worth developing, worth working your way through. Like, so, so the average person on this planet can list 20, 30, 50, 100 fears. If they are honest with themselves, they possibly could list thousands of their own fears. But very few of us ever list fears relating to God, right? So we don't focus very much of our attention on the relationship. The relationship isn't our first priority. And if, you, if you're honest with yourself, your relationship with Laura is your first priority. Before God, yes. Yeah, before yeah. God. Yeah. And, and obviously that means that if something comes up in your relationship with Laura, your relationship with God is put on the back burner, right? If your relationship with God was your first priority, then your relationship with Laura would be second priority. 
And, and that means that if something happened in your relationship with Laura, it wouldn't interfere with your relationship with God. You would still want to develop your relationship with God. Does that make sense? So one of the things we need to look at is our priorities. So when we're looking at the aspect of desire, developing desire, and this is something that will help you with some of that homework I gave you about you know, finding and developing desire, how do you go about finding and developing desire. Part of developing desire is about your internal priorities. What, what are your current priorities? If we're honest with ourselves, most of us would have to say our current priorities uh, you know, for some, it's about avoiding fear every day. That's their priority. For some, it's about getting their addictions met every day. That's their priority. They don't even have a priority with their relationship with their partner. As long as the, they get their addictions met, it doesn't really matter if they're a partner or somebody else who meets them. It doesn't really matter to them, right? That's, so a lot of times, our, even our relationship with our partner is quite low down on our priority list, if we have a partner at all, Right? And, of course, all of you have a partner, just some of you are not with them at the moment, right? Because, uh, because your partner is your other half, your soulmate. That is your partner. You're just not with them at the moment. You're not aware of them. You're not conscious of them. But, but a lot of the times you don't even care about that. You know, that's another priority that's on, down on the list. And, and often what we need to do is readjust our priorities if we're ever going to develop relationships. So if you're going to develop your relationship with God, one of the things we're going to need to do is adjust our priority system as to what's the most important relationship. Right? So, so from my perspective, my most important relationships are God, my soul, which includes my soulmate, right? because that's, she's, she's one half of my soul. So it automatically must include her. Right? So that's my next priority, the soul, my soul, my own. Then, so, that my, so mine, which is not just me, but also the other half of me. And then the souls of others is the next relationship that I would like to develop. So soul, others. So not my children. They're not my children. I've got, you know, two sons, but they're not my children. They are God's children. So they are just as important, but not more or less important to me than any other person on this planet. Does that make sense? So I want to develop a relationship with them just as much as I want to develop a relationship with any of you. Right? Can you see... If you place your priorities, now, now of course you've got other things happening down here in your priority list. You know, if you're honest with yourself, you, you might have 30, 50 things, 100 things even. You might finish up with, you know, what are the things you love doing and all that all goes on the list. But what I find is that most people don't have that as their first three priorities. The majority of people have one, num priority number one, avoidance of pain. Priority number two, Meeting of addictions. Priority number three, enjoying your life. Now, I don't know how you're going to do that with the first two priorities in play, but that's what we finish up doing. We try to think we think we can enjoy our lives while we avoid all pain and meet our addictions. But, but that, that's not possible, of course, but that's why we often have an unhappy life. But... Those first three things generally are the average person's and the average person on this planet has those first three priorities, which are completely different than those priorities. Now, in order to swap our priority systems over, we need to recognise firstly that we have a priority and what that priority is, and then we need to recognise that that is obviously out of harmony with the happiness in our soul. That's why we have unhappiness, is because our priority systems are out of harmony with God's love and laws. So we'd be better off bringing our priority systems in harmony with God, into harmony with God's love and laws. And once we recognise the importance of that, we start to adjust our priorities. So, so for like, as I said, the average person's priority system is avoid pain, Get my addictions met. Right? And then enjoy life. 
Uh, right? Usually the first three priorities in the average person doesn't even involve another person, aside from how that person can meet their addictions and how that person can help them avoid pain and how that person can help them enjoy life. That's why most relationships break down very rapidly as soon as one problem comes up. You know, like, for example, the average male on this planet, if he doesn't get sex for a month, he's already almost breaking up with his partner because his priority systems are all about these things, right? And none of those things are getting met properly, and so, right? He doesn't get to avoid pain while his partner is avoiding him. He doesn't get to have his addiction for sex met, and he doesn't get to enjoy his life because most of his life revolves around the fact that a, a woman is showing him attention sexually. And so he's willing to discard that woman and just get another one who does those things, right? So he can say he loves that woman, but the reality is his love of that woman is way down on the list. Because if your love of that woman was way up on the list, you wouldn't avoid your own pain. You wouldn't you know, want your addictions met with her. You wouldn't uh, focus on enjoyment of life. You'd be focused on sorting out the relationship between yourself and her so that you can have a happy relationship rather than a codependent one. Yeah. Mary, you wanted to say with that? Well, just equally, if you were the woman in that relationship, yep. you would, if you really uh, had the priority... This is number one, two, yeah, yeah, number two, then you wouldn't avoid sex for a month in order to avoid pain, meet your addictions and enjoy your life more. Exactly. You yeah. wouldn't do that. You just couldn't do it, right? Because you know straight away that there's something going on, there's something wrong, there's something interfering. What is it? You'd want to know. You, you wouldn't do things like that. So to, the majority of us have to be very honest with ourselves about our priorities. Most of our priorities are very narcissistic and selfish. They are, they are not involved around our relationship with God, our relationship with our soul you know, and the other half of our soul or the love of our, or, or care that we have for others, but rather they are evol revolving around those three things that are, that are our real priority. Now, why all those things maintain, are maintained as a priority, you're going to find a developing relationship with God quite difficult. And you're going to find it wax and wanes. You know, you, you, whenever one of these things comes up, whenever, whenever anything that's more important than God comes up, you will abandon God for that thing. So if your fear is more important than God, you'll abandon God and you'll embrace your fear. When you say embrace it, you'll live in it. If, you, you know, if your avoidance of pain is your primary priority, whenever that comes up in your relationship with God, you'll just abandon God and avoid the pain. That's what you'll do. Whenever your addictions come up and they get confronted in your relationship with God, if your priority is to get your addictions met above your relationship with God, then of course you'll go for your addiction and forget about God for a while. This is why we often forget about God in our daily life. When you really desire somebody, you don't forget about them. You don't ever forget about them. You think about it. You don't, do you? You, re if you, you remember the times you're really, really in love? Right? Can you remember a time during the day when you didn't think about them? It's, not, it's completely opposite, isn't it? When you're really, really in love, you think about the person all the time. When you really love somebody, that's what you do. You do do that. But most of us don't do that with God, right? For lots of reasons, you know. There's, like I said, there's literally thousands of reasons why a person may not or be challenged by the, their relationship with God or may not want a relationship with God. There's lots and lots of reasons that are potentially the reason why. But if you're truly going to progress on the divine love path, as we call it, or as people call it, the way that, that God designed to progress, if you're going to progress on the way, you are going to need to firstly have as your primary priority your relationship with God. Right? And, and, and when you don't, you will find you'll abandon God every time something else of more importance in your life comes up. So what I would, look, what I would do personally with that issue that you've raised is I would look back over the times when I had like a, a developing relationship with God where I felt there was some connection with God in that week. And then what I would do is I'd look at what happened the following week and see 
how, what that tells me about my current priorities. That what happened the following week? What it might have happened was that, you know, you had a bit of a uh, disagreement with Laura and the relationship was a bit topsy-turvy and that interfered with your relationship with God. Might be that. Or it might be that, you know, you had some gigs come up, you know, some music gigs come up and, you know, because of the gigs and your engagement with the gigs, you forgot about your relationship with God. Or it might be that some issues come up with the family, you know, with your daughter or someone, and, there, and then during that process you forgot about your relationship with God. Now, every time you forgot about your relationship with God, that tells you what your priorities are that are higher than your priority to be with God. Yeah, and I was looking at that, and I was like, and I, and I started doing that already, yep. this analysing when I lost my focus for God. Yeah. And as it's been growing over the years, yep. but it's like, you know, I have this moment with this time with God and then it disappears because something does come yep. up. Yep. And then I avoid that emotion for one, two weeks until God keeps, and I know inside that God's showing me. Yep. So it gets to a point where it becomes so much that I need to start to connect to the emotion yep. and God and then it gets cleared again and then I've got this relationship with God again. But it's yep. like I get frustrated because I have this feeling that I know that that's the process but it could be easier. True. But if you think about it, God wants the relationship with you more than you want the relationship with God. That's true, yeah. And that applies to all of us. <clears throat> God wants the relationship with me more than I want my relationship with God. And that's, that will forever be the truth, right? So if no relationship is actually occurring, it's always to do with something going on internally, always. Now, it can only be two things. One is that we are, you know, lacking desire, real desire. And, or, and two is that we're in the process of a lot of fear. It's got to be one of those two things.